Okay. Start talking about the Bronx and stuff. Good afternoon. We here with God. We we here with. Oh, hold on, stop. I messed up. We um we on the Carter 101. We here with gospel artist Joshua Robinson, and we're gonna get into it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh. Oh yeah, the red light. <laughs> I thought we was on that camera. Just go, go. All right, I'm here with um Joshua Robinson, gospel artist from New Jersey. How you doing today? All is well, man. How you? All right, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. So, who is Joshua Robinson? Joshua Robinson is just nobody trying to tell everybody about <laughs> somebody that can save anybody. That's that's me. That's a nice flow. <laughs> That's a nice. It's, it's an echo. You you. The the mic is 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 echoing. It's too hot. It's too. How you doing? Good morning. You here with the Carter 101, Karu, your host, and we here with gospel artist Joshua Robinson. How you doing today? I'm pretty good, man. How about yourself? I'm doing great, you know. Um, so who is Joshua Robinson? Well, Joshua Robinson is a no what, a nobody <laughs> trying to tell everybody about a somebody that can save anybody. And who is that somebody that can save anybody? That somebody is Jesus Christ. Bro. Okay. Yeah, I could meet I admit to that. He helped me a couple times. Sure. So, um, what got you into gospel music? Well, um, I grew up in church. Mm -hmm. I was a I was a musician first, right? So I started off playing the drums when I was yeah. like four years old. Kinda how it starts. Drums, Get that first drum set. <laughs> drums. I was twinkling on the keys a little bit and then, you know, I just kinda stuck with it and so what happened was on that journey, um, you know, I started tapping into songwriting, but it was secular music at first. Okay. So I started doing R and B. Um, of course, it's writing it, yeah. but I just developed the skill. But I say in like 2018, I started actually writing music again. Okay. So started doing R and B, secular music, some instrumental music as well. Yeah. And then um, that kind of just birthed the whole. Artists. So did you start? Did you ever play in church, or was it just? Yeah, that was what I was doing for, for the whole all time, life, all right? your life. All so you just, life. so you basically was raised in the church, and you played music. You came up, and so that's basically what got you into the gospel music. Well, Cause, that's yeah, I, that's what made me familiar yeah. with. Um, except the story about how I transitioned from R and B to gospel was a little different. Okay. I was gonna do. I was gonna stick to doing R and B. Okay. But you know, God just started tugging on my heart and telling me, "Hey, you need to go in this direction." So that's kind of how that came about. I started doing gospel, all based off of confirmation. You know, because I, I had the thought, but um, what happened was I had the thought, but I didn't say it to anybody. Exactly. But so when other people around you are telling you, like, "Hey, you know, if you just did this, but you did it." gospel you did it for god it would be different because that's a lane that's kind of thinking mm -hmm. so think about it you know you thinking about something and everybody around you is telling you but you never said anything to them what that sound like <laughs> yeah that sound like god's word <laughs> yeah, you know? um so what was like something so you so what was the art what was some artists that you some artists that you looked up to growing up um well anybody that knows me fred hammond is like my number one Right hand. That's, 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 that's the pinnacle, <laughs> but he's not the only one. I have different influences like, you know, Smokey Nofo. Um, you got Darwin Hobbs. You got John P. Key. You got the Winans, Marvin oh, Winans. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, even yeah. on yeah. the secular side, you know, you got, like, it's old school stuff, though. Like yeah, Frankie I see Lyman. you got that soul. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like Frankie Lyman, um, Marvin Gaye, you know, Luther Vandross. It's the list goes on because I see it for a long time. I, I, I used to rap when I was younger and I rapped to like a Luther Vandross beat. I made a love song for a girl. That was like my first experience with rap. Well, we <laughs> but, <laughs> being in your room just writing, you yeah, know. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah I, I get you. So, um, what was the first time like you ever you ever performed on stage? That would be like yeah. when you was like in, in church doing a drum. So, 
That was like like around what age? Um, well, doing drums <laughs> when I started really. So everything is different. So like from the drums, I remember I was like four, five. My father bought me a little drum set, and so sometimes in church they'll let me just play. Just play, it yeah. Next to the actual drummer, mm -hmm. so I would just be you know banging around, you know, and stuff like that. But um. I started playing piano in church at nine. Yeah. Um, I really started singing for real, for real in 2019. 2019. Like oh, so, always, that's, so that's like four years. So. Yeah, you know. So, so your so the instrument started early. That was like five, and then by the time you, were, what, like out of college, uh, in college. So I didn't. I didn't do college. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> no, that was, I, I, ain't, I I did one year. <laughs> Got up out of here, but you know everybody has different roles. So see, my thing is this, right? School isn't for everybody, but education is. Education is definitely for everybody. Right. Everybody need that. You can educate yourself, but mm -hmm. you don't need school to get an education. You know, the people who you know, if you go to school, you know, you have a career that you want to go to school for. I'm never gonna say don't. I think that's a great idea. If that's the land you're going in, that's yeah. what it requires. Or you want to learn a little extra? Cool. Me, school wasn't. <laughs> that school wasn't. That was. That was just. You know? I made it out. You made. You, you graduated high school. I graduated high school. Where, where you went to high school at? I went to Bloomfield High School. Okay, Bloomfield. It's a good school. It you no, know? good education. So. You know? Besides. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so you you did high school. Out of high school, now you pick up singing. You start working with the gospel. You start doing gospel. You drop. You do you like put stuff on inter on the internet right away, or you just go into the studio and recording? Well, I released a album, a gospel album last year. So I have three, four albums in total actually. Four albums. Four albums. So you doing one album every year? <laughs> I was. I did three albums um, in the R and B, mm -hmm. and then but that's when I was doing it every year. Gospel, it's a little different. I'm 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 seeing. That is similar, but it's different. Right. So it's some of the ropes. So I probably won't drop an album every year, yeah. but I'll still be consistent with you know music and you know content and things of that nature. So the album, so um, the gospel album, I dropped that um, November of twenty twenty two. It's okay. called From Darkness to His Light. From Darkness to His Light. Yeah. So that's like you entering to a new chapter in your life. Absolutely. That's that's a, that's a good title. So what's one of your favorite songs? on your album um to be honest with you it's hard to answer that mm -hmm. only because they all yeah <laughs> each song came from a place mm -hmm. so it's it's going to resonate with me differently than it may resume resonate with everybody else yeah so um honestly what i can say i probably listen to the most is um you got to talk to me and you have everlasting life those are the two that i pretty much loop, but a lot of people, they love the Red Book, which is like a hymn, a hymn medley. You know, you got people who love the first song, they can't get past the first song. <laughs> Just so, keep playing it over. You know, yeah, so, but those are my two that I play the most when I do listen to my music, because yeah. I don't really listen to my music. Oh, oh, man, it's entirely, you just listen to certain songs that like stick with you, that like have me meaning. In your life, yeah. so basically, you all your songs is written b about experiences that you personally have with with God or whatever endeavors you're going through. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So those, those those are the type of music that I like. I like music that's relatable. You know, some people go into the studio and they just talk. Yeah. You know, they pick a beat and they just talk, or they pick a song and they just try. But I like the actual writers that actually take their time and write about what they live in. Right. And what's going on? Those, yeah. those trials. It means more. It means more, and those are the ones that I think stick with people. Yeah, cause so, you know what? I, I've heard a saying a long time ago from one of my favorite musicians. His name is Travis Sales, right? And um, he said, "What comes from the heart touches the heart." Exactly. So, you know, if you say something and you say it with you say it with your endeavor being, like if I say. I love fried chicken. Mm -hmm. And I say that. And you, and you I, mean it. Even if you don't It'll like, like fried, fried chicken, chicken you going like, to love some yeah, fried chicken. He likes some fried chicken. <laughs> I can tell. You know, I feel that. Yeah. You know, so it's the same the same thing with music. You know, even with, you know, playing. Like, you play it, but you play it with emotion. 
Exactly. It's, it's contagious. It's contagious. I, I, I get. What, I understand where you come from because when you, whatever you say, whatever you feel, whatever you pour into something, people, I think they reciprocate it and they also love it too. Just the passion that you put into it, mm-hmm. it can show. It shows. And I think that's why people adapt to it. Like when it comes from the heart, you know, touches, touches the heart. The heart. Yeah. You know that meaning right there. That so I, I can understand that. And you know, a lot of people now like it's it's all watered down. Yeah. And I think we need to get back to real substance, like in, in the music. I think we need to get back to real substance because everything is just going there, just make a song, trying to make a hit, trying to make a hit. Nobody's really taking the time anymore to make actual music that people could could listen to and enjoy. So it's like, you know, time is just fast, everything. Yeah, you guys just gotta push it out, push it out, push it out. But I think when people take their time with their music, which it seems like you do, it, 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 it lasts with people longer. Definitely. You know? Yeah, that's, that's what they call timeless music. Timeless music, and, and those are the ones that's appreciated. So where do, you see, where, do, where do you see your career going? Wherever the Lord takes it, man. Wherever the Lord. It's, it's, it's interesting because I'm in a place now where I got my hand off of the steering wheel. Like, in terms of direction, like, I, I knew where I wanted to go, mm-hmm. but God said, I got different plans for you. So, I don't know what the future has to offer. All I know is I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do now. And wherever he wherever He takes me is where I'm going. You know, that's the most honest way that I could put it. Prayerfully, you know, I still work hard and do everything and, you know, there are some accolades that, you know, I can't say it's a bad thing to want. You know, you, you, you work hard on your craft. You want to see it pay off. You want to be able to show your children, your family, something tangible, something that's, hey, if I can do this, you can do this to this level. You know, if I can do this on this level, so can you. You know, so we all have those ambitions. But at the end of the day, you know, I trust that God is taking me. By me doing what God wants me to do, I know that he's going to return the favor for me by giving me what my heart desires. Like listening to you, you remind me of myself a little bit, but I wish that I had at 24 taken my hand off the steering wheel and let God just lead me. I felt like I had to put my energy into everything. And and I felt like I thought I was in control, but you're not really in control. And it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad, you know, but a lot of people get it misconstrued. They think that they're in control. I'm making this happen. I'm making this happen. It's not really you making it happen. It's not. it's not. I mean, it's not a bad thing. You said, you know, you wanted to put your energy into everything. And I don't think it's a bad thing that you wanted to do that. But just know that at the end of the day, all you can control is what's within you. Mm-hmm. What comes towards you, you can't control. But you can control how you handle it. Yeah. You know what I mean? If, <laughs> if, some, <laughs> if somebody comes in and just punches me in my face, Right? Mm-hmm. My first <laughs> 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 You know what I'm saying? I could choose to swing, swing back, back at that or... dude. Or he might just be not I don't don't come up on me and punch me in my face. But <laughs> what I am saying is, you know, if somebody runs in and I'll be like, now why'd you do that? If if I just charge at him, you know, he know what was coming at him. Mm-hmm. But if he runs up on me and I look at him and I'm just like, now why'd you do that? He might mm-hmm. get a little worried. Yeah, like what just you know? <laughs> yeah, <I laughs> He's like, wait, I just hit him with all my might. He's just looking at me like, yeah, you know. Yeah. So, I'm just saying that just to say you control how you react. Yeah, how you react in a situation, or you control that. But what comes towards you, you can't. But you have to be ready for anything. My mother mm-hmm. always told me if you stay ready, you don't you have, have to, to get, get ready. Now I know that was a drastic <laughs> example, but if you hang around me, you kind of understand that I'm one of those people that. I don't mind going to the far extremities to get somebody to understand something, especially when it comes down to, you know, God and how he operates, you know. But you could keep it calm or you can you can go to the extremes, but at the end of the day, what matters is that you're reaching everybody, not exactly. just the, the majority. Because the majority gets the idea. There's a lot of people that still don't. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you got to be able to bring everybody at least bring them to the water. You can't make them you can't make, you can't drink. make the horse drink the water, but you can bring you them, can to, lead the them to the water. So, you can't make them drink. Yeah. You know, I've been I've been 